Welcome back everyone. I hope you all are doing well. So today's video is gonna be all about the money transactions outside India, especially for the students. I'll be telling you about the different methods of receiving money from India, different banks, cards and the charges and how you can save on those charges. First of all, you must note that most of the banks outside your home country will charge certain amount as transaction fees for the ATM withdrawals. The charges can vary from bank to bank. For example, in Philippines, when you withdraw money from the HSBC bank, they charge you approx 150 piso per transaction, while the other banks may charge you up to 250 piso per transaction. There is already a video on this channel regarding monthly expenses in Philippines if you want to watch that. Now let's get right into the video. The first and the most preferred choice of the students is usually the international debit card. Talking about the advantages of the international debit cards, the first one is that they works at almost all the ATMs outside India. Second one, usually they have withdrawal limit of around 50,000 INR. Some might have less than that or more than that, depending upon your bank. And the third one is that you can get them easily from a bank. You just have to go to your bank, fill up the form or you can ask the bank representative. Moving on to the disadvantages, most banks charge huge fees for international transactions in form of the conversion charges except for a few banks like Punjab National Bank, Indian Bank, etc. And they are not widely accepted at most of the POS and if accepted then they carry a large fees in the form of transaction fees. And in the end the rupee cards are not widely accepted and have a comparatively less withdrawal limit per day that is around 25k per uh, transaction. The other option is to open an account in a country you are living in. This certainly can be a choice if you are going to stay in that country for a brief period. The advantage of this is that you have to pay minimal to zero charges for the ATM withdrawals in that country and are mostly accepted at all the POS in the country you are living in. The disadvantages of this method is that you have to pay a certain fees at the bank in India through which you are sending money to the foreign account. And can be a problem when the sender in India has no available branch with the international transaction facility in his area. And it can take days for the amount to appear in the receiver's account as the currency conversion process at the bank's end is very long. Another choice can be a forex card. They are the choice for the frequent foreign travelers and can deal with the multi-currency transactions at ATMs and point of sales and they certainly are a better choice if you travel to different countries around the globe. The disadvantages of the forex cards are that sometimes they involve agents who charge to load your card with the US dollar plus the conversion fees for the INR to USD and then USD to the local currency and then the conversion charges may vary based upon the banks and the fluctuations of the US dollar prices. The latest option in the market are the new banks which are relatively new thing they involve the financial tech firms that offer internet only financial services that is they don't have any physical branches instead they tie up with the normal banks for the needed services of a bank the advantages are that they are mobile friendly and the applications are very interactive with real-time data regarding your money and have almost no to minimal charges as compared to the regular banks account opening is instant with the verification process and you will receive your card within a few days after the verification process is completed. Few of the examples of the new banks are FI Bank, Jupiter Bank and the Neo Bank. I will leave the link to the application in the description if you want to check them out. And uh, you can use their international debit cum forex card at almost every place which accepts visa and there is no charge except for the 100 rupees per withdrawal at an ATM. I myself have used all the methods I mentioned here. I found that the new banks are the most suitable one for the students because of its wide acceptability and no hidden charges except for the 100 rupees per ATM withdrawal which is nothing as compared to the other means. I will also love to give you some tips before you travel to another country. First one is that at a POS or a point of sale where you tap or swipe the card, always pay in the form of local currency of that country if asked to choose. Second one is that make sure your mobile operator works in the country as it comes in handy when you have to make some transaction online through application or the internet banking because you might receive OTP on your mobile number. Third one is that always confirm about the charges from your bank as they all have different charges for the different services. Fourth one, don't trust everything your forex card agent or your consultancy tells you about the things. Uh, do your own research before moving to your country. 
so now with that i'll end the video i hope that i have answered few of the queries if you learn something then please like the video and do subscribe our channel thank you and stay safe